by now. Uh, no. Did you hook him up right? No, I didn't. Sky! <laughs> I literally just said that you have to hook, that this dash one is negative. Oh, you can't even see. This, oh God. There we go. I just said that, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. Focus. Jesus. I know, right? Okay, I literally just said that this dashed one is negative and I hooked it up to the positive wire. If you do that, your lights won't work. Sky. Oh, now you start the video. <laughs> I dropped my string. What's up, uh, Tessa? What's up, everyone? <laughs> It's Nat from NASA here with coming at you with an electrical video. All right, what's up everyone? It's Matt from NASA here to give you this video about electrical systems, which are very overwhelming and scary because none of us are electricians, including myself. Fires. Or Sky. And fires. Fires are scary. Fires are bad. So I'm going to take you through the steps, what to think about, how we did our system, and we're going to test our system for you live to see if it works. We've already put up the ceiling, some of it, so we hope it does. Step one, what kind of system are you working on? Are you looking for outlets? Are you looking for lights? Are you even building out a 12 volt system right now or are you building your 120 volt? That's what you should figure out first. Come back to me when you know the answer. <laughs> All right, you're back. Welcome back to the 12 volt system. <laughs> <laughs> Slap on your game eyebrows. Oh. Are they on? Yeah. Are they on? <laughs> you have to figure out what system you're working on. Usually in a schoolie build there are two, your 120 and your 12 volt system. A lot of your smaller things like your lights, your max air, uh, maybe your pump, toilet, vent, fan, those types of things usually run on the 12 volt system, but your outlets, like if you have regular wall outlets and that sort of thing, that'll run on 120. You do want to try to run as many things on 12 volt as possible because there's a drop in efficiency when you go from your 12 volt to your 120 from your solar, but that's a whole other situation. So let's just talk about wires for now and wiring your 12 volt system. Once you know that you're working on your 12 volt system, the next thing is to plan out where will all of your appliances that run on 12 volt end up. And this is specifically about the lights today that we're going to be talking about. So. That's your next step. Step two is to figure out where are the lights gonna actually be? Are we running everything on one switch or two switches? So Sky and I decided that we were gonna run everything, not everything, we're gonna run on two switches. Gonna run one circuit in the back and one in the front. And the reason why is because we wanted to be able to have lights on in the back or lights off in the back while we had lights on in the front. Maybe somebody was asleep and we wanted to do work, we wanted to have the ability to turn one switch on and have a set of front lights on while the back were off. So that's what we planned out to do and Sky planned out exactly where each of these lights would be and we have a funky pattern of like two and then there's one and there's two again. That's your second step, where are your lights actually going to end up. So your fourth step is actually to run your wires, which is scary um, because most of us haven't touched these things before and don't know how they work. So I'm going to take you through our system now. So for our system, we ran wires in two different circuits like I mentioned. The first step for us was figuring out where are our batteries going to live, where is the system going to run from, and we have that right in the front here, which will be a box full of our batteries and our whole solar setup and our circuits and all of that sort of thing. So figure out where your batteries are going to be and then you know where your wires are going to run from. So that's why we have wires just sitting here right now and we've labeled them back lights, front lights. So once you figure that out, you can just get a bunch of wire. This is a, uh, we used 14 gauge wire. This isn't any special marine grade or anything like that. Um, it's pretty standard and we will provide links for everything that we used in the description of this video so you can go and get it yourself and have everything that you need to run your wires for your lights. Um, but basically you're going to start with running your wires from where your batteries are to each of your lights. But it gets a little confusing because it's, it's tricky to figure out where to start. The way I thought about it was each light has to have two wires, a positive and a negative. So you have to have that for each light. But in order to do that, it becomes kind of tricky. How do you make these separations where there seem to be four? And you know what's happening here where there's like eight <laughs> wires. Um, so it is overwhelming. 
but your your the first step in running them in a circuit is going to be starting from that box or wherever you have your batteries to the very last light. So I'll take you all the way back here. You're gonna run wires from that box along whatever ridge you're running them along like this and everyone should have some sort of ridge here if you you know framing out your windows or something like that that you can run them along and then all the way to the back where your circuit ends so this is where our first circuit is going to end at this center light here so that wire this wire was a run initially from that box all the way along that ridge up across this frame and then through our light hole so that, that's the first step in the actual running the wires for your circuit. And the second step is going to be branching off of that initial wire. So I'm going to take you through how we did that now. Crack. Snake. Crack the snake. Snake. Ooh. Okay, so step two is to branch off from that initial wire or wires that you ran to your back light so that you can create series of other lights going down so you don't just have one light in your system. So the way we did that was by using these butt connectors that you crimp and heat shrink. Uh, and this makes it all really secure and tight so they're not you know, coming loose or anything or starting any fires. We had uh, something else here originally. What was it called? A scotch, A scotch lock. lock. Don't use those. Bad. They're bad. So we didn't know that. We originally were gonna do something with scotch locks but we were told that these are better. So we'll provide a link for these as well so you can get them. Um, these are actually 12 gauge butt connectors and the reason why they're bigger than the actual wires that we have is because we have to have two in here so it has to have the ability to fit two of these together um, but you know that you run into a problem because you only have one wire in here so on the other side so you have to basically cut this one a little longer fold it in half twist it together and put it in so that it's the same width and when you crimp everything is really tight um, together so that'll allow you to get two in there and one over there and have everything work out for you but what this does essentially is allows us to create a branch and then this runs up and over and then we have another one here you can't see because I taped it we use these zip ties to fasten them to the wood so I wanted to make sure it was all protected in there uh, and then it runs down into your light and like I said two wires for each, positive and negative, and you have the wire that continues over for your second one. And the, uh, a good way of doing this, just conceptually, it was kind of hard to think about all of this, is run from here to your longest one first. So ignore this, you know, run your longest one, and then just cut two small pieces, cut those wires, and then put them all together into your splices just like this. Mm -hmm. So that's, the, that's why it's easier to just run the full thing, and then you cut them, and insert your splices and you're good to go. So this process is basically just repeated. Ooh, nice. That's on a snake. <laughs> it's basically repeated for all of these lights. Um, and where you only have one, like we, we have one in, in certain places, all you have to do is, want, is run one branch and there's no other splice in between happening here. So then that process is just continued. And for your back circuit, if you have one, it's the same thing. Um, and then that is continued throughout the entirety of the bus. And um, a couple key things to keep in mind, protect your wires from metal um, or rubbing up against anything because that could start a fire. Make sure that when you uh, are doing your connections for your splices that they're strong because you don't want any of the wires slipping out and then you have to you know, get into your ceiling or your walls to fix them. So yeah, that's it. Good one. Now time to test. And now we're electricians. If it works. No, we're not. Okay, this light is hooked up to our front circuit off of this wire, which has a splice coming off of it, which is why we want to test this one, because that is going to be where the mistake is if there's any mistakes, as opposed to this one that doesn't have any splices. Okay. Here we go, 9 volt. Testing with a 9 volt battery. And action. I'm shaking. Get, there we oh, go. Nice. Yeah. Look at her. Nice. Oh, thank goodness.